Hi, welcome to the Games Planner. I'm Jeff the Games Planner, and today I'm Games Planning Bremer Haven. Hi, welcome back. If you've watched the other videos, you'll have an idea of how this game plays. Red, because he's the captain at the moment, starts with four money. Blue, who's the next one down, starts with six money. They both have identical cards. Red is going to put some funds on building. Blue is going to do same. He thinks it's probably worthwhile doing that one. Red really needs to get extra cards, so he'll go there. Blue will put funds there. Red will go for that ship. Blue doesn't look the, like the looks of any of those ships, so he's going to leave the ships alone for the moment. I think it's probably worth his while to up his hand as well. Red is going to put a card just there. Blue will put a card on that one. Red will put a card there, as will blue. Okay, we now go in order for what's happening. So, red and blue have both put one in here, so they get one money each. Blue's the only one who's put a card on this, so he gets that card, just off to the side of his board at the moment. Blue has won this, so blue gets a free build, and he will take that free build to build that one. Red can spend one money to do a build, and he thinks there's benefit in doing that, so he will spend his one money plus one more because it's on the back of these cards, or we could do a bollard, and I think it's probably worthwhile doing a bollard. Now, each of them can spend four more money to be able to do something else. Why four money? Because that's the value that was put onto it by blue. So blue is spending four money to add a bollard, and red doesn't have enough money to spend, so he won't. Red has most definitely won that, so he gets that card. Blue spends the difference, so two money, which he currently has. Um, spend the two money to also take an extra card. Neither of them are changing the order of, the, of what things are worth, simply because there's no value in doing so at the moment. So that card, Changes. Blue has the ability to move things around, so he will move himself up to captain. He gets four money. Red gets three money. So four money for blue, three more money for red. We then come down onto the other boards. So this comes in here for red, and red has also got himself a second place to deliver stuff. They straight away get the number on top of it, notice this one has one bollard, there's one bollard on each side of that. The ship that has come in also gets the goods as marked on it. That's everything up on the main board for them to come in to. So I'll go with red first. He doesn't have any buildings, so that one doesn't do anything. This one, he's able to move these along onto other spots. He can then spend one money to turn one of these greens into two brown, which he will do. Those two brown are able to take up the same spot. He then checks his prestige, so he's got one prestige for that ship and nothing for everything else. And then we remove one of the time counters from each of the elements that are in there. We do the same over on blue, so this can all be happening at the same time. None of his things have a gear on them. He hasn't took any, taken any ships in this time, so he doesn't do anything there. Uh, we do two does so pushes up two on the prestige and remove one from his cargo. We then come along, move number one to number two, a new one there. That one goes over to the discard pile because no one's taken it, and two more come out. We then move the ship along two spots and flip that over. So what's going to happen at the end of the next round is some pirates. Uh, so you have to pay a ransom for every ship you've got in harbour. The bigger ship, the more you have to pay. So there's a lot of writing on that. In essence, you're going to pay for the dock size that you're using. So if this was the case when that card happens, this player would be playing, paying one money because he needs one berth. And that is all. The other thing to do, notice that we've got six cards in each hand, so the number one now gets discarded back to the box. And that will be the same for both players. Number one, back to the box. 
Okay, moving on to the next round. Notice that the blue is player number one now. Okay, he's going to place that underneath the police station. What the police station does is it stops the red stuff from happening because you have a police station on your dock. Red player is really worried about getting enough people to send up to his ships. So he'll go for that one. Blue's going to go for that one. Red is going to go for that one he likes up in the size of his hand. Blue is going to go for that one. Red is going to go for the building as well. Blue is going for that. Red's going for that one. Blue A has one left and he thinks it's probably worthwhile up in the size of his hand as well. And red has one left. Uh, he's just going to throw that on there. Okay, so we go through. Blue's the only person who has bid on this. His bid is five, so he'll take that one. Then we go for building. Red has put four forward, blue has put forward three. So red gets to build for free and he thinks that he's going to spend his one money to build a, another bollard. Blue will then spend one money to build that police station. Red only has four money, so he's not going to be able to build again uh, because each of the buildings would cost him money on top of what the four money. Blue also only has four money, so he's not going to be able to build again either. We then flip that over. Red has most definitely taken that extra card. It's worth eight. Blue will have to spend three money to up his cards. Uh, and he thinks he will do that. So Blue spends the three money. It's them up their cards. No one has bid on this one, so card order changes. Red has bid on that, so he pushes himself up. So he will be the first to go next turn. He also gets four money in. Blue gets three money in. Red's the only one who's bid on this, so this card, one bollard to him. Blue's the only one bid on this, so... Blue goes to him as well, and Blue's the only one that's bid on that, so that can come down to Blue. Those cards that just came in, get their markers on them. Because Blue has this card, he's able to up or down what the markers look like, so he's going to make that only the one marker, and he will make that one just the four markers. So now we go down to the bottom, neither of them have gears. Each of them has some stuff that needs to move, so we'll move these guys off their ship. These two can then move up to that, that can move up to that. No stuff coming off the ship can't move straight onto the cards to be sent away. We then add up, add up the prestige, so this one's got three prestige, so that pushes that one up to three. This one has two, four, plus four is eight, so that pushes that right up to eight. We then take a clock off each of them. This has now been reduced to zero clocks uh, because it had the last clock taken off. So it will now go away to the pile. We then return everything to hand. Notice this hand has six cards, so we take the lowest value card and that gets them returned to the box. So there's only five cards in hand. And same thing for red. So the two comes away, back to the box. The pirates then come, so the pirates are going to cost this guy two money. So two money goes to the pirates. They would come to here, but he doesn't have anything in the ship, but he's also got a police station, so no pirates affect them. The boat moves forward one. Then this card gets flipped over, and there's going to be a storm at the end of the next round, which is going to cause each of the ships in the harbour to leave one round earlier than expected. We then reset the decks. Okay, we've jumped forward a few more turns. I just wanted you to see how this scores and how these will go away or get sent away. We've removed the clock icons, which reveals these two to go and all three of these to go. Everything else is staying where it is. So first up, we look up at what things are worth. So the person's worth one money. The brown box is worth three, so that's four money. Plus three is seven eight, nine money, then because they're fulfilled completely, 10, 11 money. Brings 11 money in. 
we then take the goods back to where they should be in the bank and those two go away, clearing space for new shipment stuff to come in. This side is also able to send stuff. So he's got a guy for one money, brown box for three, so that's four, oil for four, which is eight, another brown box for three, which is 11, and a green box for two, which brings up to 13. That one's worth nothing for fulfilling it. That one's worth two, so it's worth 15. That one's worth nothing for fulfilling. So it's 15 money. One, two, three. 15 money in for those. Notice, if that's what it looks like, he would have lost three money out of that entire lot. We now go up to moving the ship in the mutiny. As you've seen before, ship moves one. The mutiny flips the stuff on the crew ladder, which is there. So red will be the first player next time. Then we turn out the new cards and start the next round. I'll leave it there, however, I think you've got a really good idea of how this game plays out. It gets harder and there's more stuff coming into the ships and going out with the shipments uh, as the game goes on. The Really quickly, when you do get to the end, this guy has 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 money. 18 times five is, is 190. This guy has 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 money times 10 is 220. This guy at the moment is the winner of the game. That's as simple as it is, and that's how the game is played. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you wish to be games playing, please shoot me an email at thegamesplanner at gmail.com. Follow me on Insta and Twitter at thegamesplanner to keep up to date with the games I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.